Hey, Ben, what kind of a challenge do you guys face against uh, a defense that uh, brings as much pressure as uh, Indiana likes to bring? You know, we've just – we've got to be on our game. We've got to really spend extra time in the film room and uh, dial in on every small little detail while in practice and in the film room. So it'll be a big week mentally making sure that we're on our assignments. What's uh, – what added responsibility do you have, I guess, in terms of – communication in a game like this and making sure uh, guys around you uh, know what they're supposed to do? In games like this, it's vital for me to over communicate. So I need to make sure that everyone, both guards, both tackles, running back, know what call I'm making and where I'm going at all times. So it's better to over communicate than under communicate with a team like this that's that well coached. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, Ben, I was wondering if you could uh, talk a little bit about the maturity you've seen in, in Matt uh, Corral over the course of this season, the way that he's kind of grown as a leader. Sure. Well, Matt's just <clears> – <throat> he's really uh, – I think his accountability has been huge for him, personal accountability. And uh, you see it just like how he spoke just a minute ago. Uh, Matt's just a leader, and uh, he takes full – full accountability for himself. And uh, I think that's huge, especially to play college football. If you can't take personal accountability, then you'll never grow as a player or as a leader. And I think Matt's really stepped into that role and of, of taking personal accountability while also holding others to the same standard, so. I was also curious, he was talking a minute ago about a culture change inside the program that it wasn't all the way there yet, but that it was definitely on its way. You've been around for about the same amount of time. Do you agree with that assessment? Absolutely. I think guys are <clears> – a lot more guys are buying in and uh, a lot more guys are giving that extra effort, whether that's in the field, whether that's in the weight room, whether that's, you know, while we're watching film on our own. I think guys are really buying in, so. And the last thing, you guys are going into this game, obviously, without at least some of the weapons that, that have been critical for your offense this year with, you know, Elijah and Kenny and Braylon. And I don't know about Jerry on, but obviously you're not going to be at full strength. What – how, how much more pressure is that put on you guys to uh, step up your games against a really good Indiana team? You know, the expectation is always the same. Whether you're first string, second string, third string, there's the, the expectation does not drop. We, we have the expectation that we're taking the field and we're scoring a lot of touchdowns. So that, that does not change regardless who's in the game. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we'll go to Nick. Going off of what Neil just asked, Lane talked about those numbers with COVID and opt-outs and everything. How is the line heading into this? Are all the regular guys still practicing right now? Yes, sir. We're all still practicing. We're all good to go. Just for you and the other veterans up front and on the offense, how cool is it to finally get this opportunity to be playing in the postseason? It's amazing. You know, it's a little bit weird. I'm not going to lie. I'm practicing right now. I'm getting used to that. But, uh, you know, there's nowhere else I'd rather be with my brothers and uh, – Getting ready for a bowl game. Never been to one, and uh, going to Tampa sounds sounds like a lot of fun. Playing against a really really good football team. There's nothing else I'd rather want to do January second. What do you say to some of the younger guys who about not taking this for granted? You've been through so much with these teams that couldn't go. What do you say that to these guys that are trying to make this the norm? You know, I'd say that to just take it all in. You know, uh, I mean, you're never you're never promised tomorrow. So just take it all in and. It really just enjoy the process. I mean, I this is the first bowl game I've been to, but I've enjoyed my process here at Ole Miss, and I've loved every single second of it. But uh, just to really take it all in while you're here, because it will go by before you know it. All right, David Johnson. Hey, Ben, something that kind of gets lost in the shuffle with all, all the COVID-19 concerns and everything is you guys have basically been practicing since early July. Um, yeah, how, how do you deal with the fatigue factor, both physically and mentally, uh, of being out there, being engaged in practicing football for so long? I'd say a couple things to touch on that. I'd say one that pretty much everyone's fully bought in, so that's not really too big of a difficulty. And number two, we've also had quite a few bye weeks in between where we've had a little bit of extra time where we've had off and let our bodies recover and kind of just mentally just dial back in. So I think, yes, it has. We have been practicing and playing much longer, but really 
in reality, like we, we've still only played, you know, nine games and uh, this is going on to our 10th. So having those extra bye weeks <clears throat> really kind of help just refresh everyone mentally and physically. Did your dad play in a bowl game at Ole Miss? Played in the Liberty Bowl, 1989. Yes, sir. <laughs> I know both your, both your grandparents obviously played in bowl games at Ole Miss. Uh, I mean, how important was that to you to to extend that? You know, it's huge. Uh, obviously, want to uh, keep my family's winning streak alive of bowl games. <laughs> I don't want to be the first to mess that up. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just a great opportunity to uh, be able to represent my family out there. So, so the Browns are undefeated in bowl games? Uh, don't quote me on that, but I know they're definitely positive. So, <laughs> I'll look it up. Thank you, Ben. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. David. All right, we'll go back to Parrish. Hey, Ben, Lakia told us that he was coming back, going to take advantage of that extra year offered by the NCAA. Uh, are you aware of any other teammates, offense or defense, that are coming back? Uh, he, he was not. Uh, not that I'm – no one really off the top of my head. Can't really think of really anyone, but uh, I think everyone's just excited for another year. I mean, we just saw what we've done in just this one season, you know, without even having a spring football and not even having a full off season of workouts. So I think that just really excites a lot of guys. Just we see our potential and we see our opportunity and uh, we're seeing almost football coming on the rise again. So I think that just creates a lot of excitement and a lot of guys want to be a part of that. 